Hello everyone. Welcome to this presentation. My name is Shubhadeep. I am the CEO co-founder of Valtrex. I am here with Jevin today and we are going to talk about the learnings from the verification of the RISC-V vector specification. This slide covers the agenda for today's talk. We will start with an overview of Sting followed by the verification strategy adopted to effectively verify the vector extension. We will also talk about the challenges associated with the test generation for vector instructions and describe the techniques and mechanisms developed in Sting to address them. Finally, we will provide the details of the architectural coverage flow, some of the bugs found during the development along with the future work. For those who are not familiar with Sting, it is a bare metal tool which uses a software-driven methodology for design verification of risk systems. As you can see on the right hand side, Sting has a layered architecture consisting of user input, stimulus generator and a test harness. The user input consists of configuration files for test generator and kernel along with a large library of ASM and C++ tests. These are processed by the generator to create the test and a set of intermediate files which are compiled and linked with the test harness that is the kernel and library to create a self-contained ELF meant for execution on the described duty. The tests are architecturally correct and self-checking in nature. This methodology also allows for portability of stimulus and consistent execution across a wide range of duty environments from simulation to silicon. One of the key USPs of Sting is its scalability. Given described designs are allowed to be very flexible, we have factored that requirement in the design of the tool. We allow the stimulus to adapt to any set of extensions and system memory map, so it does not matter if you are targeting an IoT embedded or a server class core, the test generated by Sting scale very well. Also the test generation is very quick, it just takes a few tens of seconds to generate a Sting test. Coming to RISC-V, we have support for all the ratified extensions and features defined in the user and privilege specification. Vector and bit manipulation extensions are also very well covered. Sting has been used for verification of multiple open source and proprietary implementations. Some of the companies like Google, Seagate, sci and Esperanto use it very extensively for their RISC-V designs. This slide covers the primary usage models of Sting. This is important to understand the context in which Sting is used and how we have enhanced these to meet the needs of vector extension. First and foremost, Sting as a random engine supports methodologies of constraint random and graph based and provides intelligent integration with directed stimulus to create highly effective tests. The random engine also takes advantage of the speed of the target duty for which the tests are getting generated to get the maximum verification throughput. In case it's a slow simulation, it generates just one or maybe a few tests, whereas for silicon, the test generation itself can take place on the duty so that many million tests can be generated, executed and checked on the target itself. With Sting, we also provide a very unique stimulus programming framework called Snippets. At a very high level, it is very similar to ASM but comes with a number of high level language constructs and mechanisms which make it easy to get integrated with the random test. It is used to cover scenarios which are difficult to hit using random code and which possibly need interaction with other hardware threads and higher privilege levels. This framework is extensible and our users can utilize this to develop custom tests to run along with Sting generated stimulus. The snippet framework and the configurations have been used to create an extensive architecture verification suite for RISC-V. Scenarios are identified from the RISC-V specification and added to the test plan maintained by us. A snippet or a configuration dictionary is developed against each line item and added to the database. The database itself contains more than 60,000 tests for a fully populated RISC-V system, which are then shipped as a library of test scenarios with every Sting release package. So this brings us to the end of the slides, which provide an overview of Sting. Now I'll be handing over the control to my colleague Jevin, who will take you through the details of the mechanisms implemented in Sting for effective test simulation of vector instructions. Hello everyone, I'm Jevin and I will be sharing a few details specific to the support of test generation for vectors using Sting. 
The RISC-V vector extension also enables simple, high performance and high efficiency vector processing for computationally intensive tasks, especially for applications using machine learning and AI. I will start with a high level timeline for vector development in Sting. It started in December 2018 after the Point 0.6 draft was released. The team conducted a preliminary review and came up with a development plan. By September 2019, we had the Point 0.7 draft and the initial design for the test generator was also ready. The support to generate all vector instructions was completed by October 2019. Around this time, the Point 0.7.1 draft was also released. The Point 0.8 draft came in around November 2019 and it had changes in handling of sign extensions to some instructions, also changes in the functionality of existing instructions. The changes were added into Sting by November 2019. By then, we also had a number of self-checking snippets. The point 0.9 draft was a major change in the specification. The load store instructions were modified to support effective element width and also effective ELML. The fractional ELML support was also introduced. This required a major redesign in the test generator for of Sting, which was completed by June 2020. Currently, we have finished working on the 1.1 draft and is complete from a vector point of view. Much of the effort is in adding optimizations for the test generation and plugging coverage holes using Sting. Next, we'll take a deeper look at the verification strategy used by Sting for vectors. The RISC-V CPU test plan was extended to include the vector specification. The scenarios identified in the test plan were covered using Sting's random engine and the snippet framework. A lot of effort was spent on the random engine to ensure that the large number of permutations were effectively covered. This random engine is controlled using graph-based models and is ensured that the permutations of state variables like ELMER, SEW, VSTART are randomized in the test stream. Self-checking snippets were developed to cover scenarios that are hard to hit in the random code. Compliance-based tests were developed for verifying illegal scenarios. All the test stimulus was rigorously tested with Spike and Impras's RISC-V OVP SIM to ensure that they are functionally correct. We also developed various regression configurations to stress various traffic patterns in the test stream. As mentioned before, the random engine covers most of the scenarios for the vector extension, and hence, this was an important piece of the puzzle. The pseudo instructions to control the randomization of each parameter are controlled by biases, as shown in the image on the left side, and based on these bias values, they are emitted into the test stream. This is how we achieved a great deal of control on what needs to be randomized based on our requirement. On the right side, the flowchart describes the instruction pickup for the Sting Random Engine. Based on the extensions enabled, the test generator picks up an instruction from the instruction pool. In case of vectors, not all instructions are valid at all times. The validity of an instruction depends upon various factors like the current SEW and the ELMAR. For example, a load store vector instruction is not valid when email is greater than 8 or email is less than 1 by 8. This required us to introduce heuristics in the test generation to ensure that a valid instruction is picked. Once a valid instruction is selected, resources need to be allocated for it. If it happens to be a vector load store instruction, acceptable stride or index values needs to be calculated based on the available memory. Then, the registers for the operation have to be selected from the available pools based on the instruction type. For example, if the instruction is requesting for a mask register which uses MLN format, or does the instruction permit overlap of registers, or does the instruction permit pseudo overlap of, in of registers which means that either the sources can overlap but cannot overlap with the destination. So all of these conditions have to be verified before assigning a register to the instruction. Once these requirements are met, the instruction is picked up and the cycle repeats for the next instruction. In the following slides, we will look at the different challenges introduced by the randomization of these attributes. In this slide, we look at some of the challenges posed by the vector load store instructions. Depending upon the memory constraint given by the DUT, the vector operations must select stride or index values accordingly. 
The length of the operation can also be controlled by adjusting the VL as well. For strided vector operations, each instruction decides the EEW, which means that even if the stride value is the same and the EEW is different, then the instruction would access different memories. We have developed two modes of operations where either we can pick up a new stride value before every instruction or we can keep the stride value constant for a particular period of time in the test stream. Just to show you an example. Here you can see that we have adjusted the stride values before each strided instruction based on the EEW of the instruction. We also support positive and negative stride values for the stride registers. We also randomize the alignment of the base register based on the EEW. Similarly, for indexed operations, the index registers use EEW EML format while the memory register uses the SEW EML format. We have developed mechanisms to populate the index register based on the EEW of that instruction which is going to be picked. We have also developed mechanisms to pick instructions such that EEW is equal to SEW to avoid the scaffolding instructions based on user-driven controls. These parameters ensure that the coverage is not lost in terms of offsets that are picked as well as the ability to get back get back to back indexed operations without scaffolding instructions. Improvements were also made to support negative values when xlin is equal to EEW for indexed and vector atomic operations. In case of segment load stores the access size per instruction was dependent upon the NF field in the instruction, which also needed to be taken into account while calculating the offsets such that it does not result in out-of-bounds conditions. We also covered various other interesting scenarios, which included load stores to the same offsets, as well as using multiple aliases to do the load stores and many other scenarios uh, as well. Configuration-based parameters were made available to the user to decide on what trade-offs need to be taken per test. In this slide, we look at some of the challenges faced during test generation in randomization of ELML. Because of ELML randomization, Sting needed to ensure that the registers picked per instruction are populated from the correct pool. This is also dependent on the instruction since widening and narrowing instructions need to pick registers from a higher or lower pool corresponding to the instruction that is picked. We also needed to ensure that instructions picked are architecturally valid. For example, widening instructions cannot be picked when ELML is set to 8. Also, at higher ELMLs, say example ELML 8, we only have 4 registers that are architecturally valid, V0, V8, V16 and 24. And in case of multi-core, the predictability of these registers needed to be intelligently handled at higher ELML states. There were a number of scenarios which required us to randomize VSTART and VL in the test stream. Here we will describe how this was handled in Sting. As mentioned previously, the index register has to be populated with valid value, but if VSTART is non-zero, for example if VSTART is 3, the first three elements of the index register will not be populated accurately and hence the subsequent load store instruction would result in bad addresses thereby causing memory corruption. Some implementations don't support non-zero vstart for a particular instruction type, for example arithmetic instructions. Sting is designed to easily integrate these per instruction based constraints to ensure valid instruction pickup. While randomizing VL, we also had to ensure that the memory accesses based on VL values are valid. There are possibilities of the VL value being changed silently in the stream. For example, the fault only first can silently update the VL if a fault occurs at any other element other than the first element. While the Sting random engine is excellent in sweeping through different configurations, there was still a large gap in terms of compliance and cross-product related scenarios which needed handling. It was mostly covered using the snippet framework which was enhanced to support vector specification. ELML aware and ELML specific resource allocation constructs were developed to use either generator based ELML or 
an animal specific for the particular snippet for directed scenarios. This construct was also extended to support shadow operations to enable handling of features like register overlap. A number of param blocks, a snippet framework API, which can be thought of as a library of utility, were developed to promote reuse between multiple snippets. For example, param blocks that were used to save and restore the vtype register. In this slide, we will describe the different scenarios and use cases for which snippets were utilized. Random and fixed pattern based tests were developed to test the functional correctness of the instruction. These are mostly spot checks intended to be applied very early in the design. The existing snippets to exercise PMP and PMA were enhanced to include vector instructions. Memory snippets were also designed to stress true sharing and false sharing of memory with vector operations. Existing snippets, which test the scalar atomicity, were extended to test the atomicity of axis by vector instructions. We also developed interesting scenarios to test the interaction of vector memory operations with the MMU, like asynchronous space faults on all types of vector load store instructions, in variants of the same with and without TLB flush. Various regression configurations were made along with snippets to create pipeline scenarios like write after write, write after read, and read after write to ensure that data corruption was not caused by hazards. This brings us to the end of the slides which explain the changes required in the test generation and snippet framework for vectors. Shubhadeep will cover the remaining slides on coverage, bugs found and the future work. Thanks, Chavin. So vector generation in many ways has been very challenging given so many combinations such as the CW, LML and others. It is very easy to constrain the stimulus in trying too much which will then have an adverse effect on the quality of the test which gets generated. In Sting we have an utility called Sting Coverage Manager which can extract architectural coverage information from the execution trace and fill up a SQL database. The SQL database can then be queried to extract information to get insights into the stimulus. There are many standard queries defined such as to check if you are able to run every vector instruction with every possible CW value or if we had page fault for every vector memory operation or not. This was quite a tedious task that is to go through the coverage data, but it yielded a gold mine of information in terms of identifying coverage holes and combinations of SEW, LML and other parameters where generating the random code was becoming difficult. This exercise was also a major driver for snippet requirements. Below, we have shown some of the cover points from running 100 Sting tests on Spike. Next, we'll be talking about the bugs. Given the early start and continuously evolving specification, there were plenty of bugs which we hit during the development phase. Most of them were in the area of compliance and functionality of the instructions. A longer list is present in the backup. Here we are going to just present a few of them. Like the VS field in S status not getting updated when the M status is VS field was written. There was another scenario where the VL was not getting updated correctly when the fault first load hit a trap. There were also a number of instances of vector instructions producing incorrect output and non-compliant behavior when trap or traps or exceptions got generated. Given the large specification and its system interaction, we are still finding a number of bugs as we continuously work on the tool and the stimulus. In terms of future work, we are focusing largely on enhancing our stimulus further using feedback from the coverage manager and our customers. Some MMU scenarios which have greater interaction with the vector instructions are also being enhanced. The support for vector instructions in standalone and on-target test generation modes of Sting are also being planned to be implemented. So this brings us to the end of the presentation. I hope it was useful and interesting for all the viewers. For more information, you can visit our website or write to us at the email address given below. We also have a virtual booth at the summit. In case you have any questions or you want to understand the product and the methodology in greater detail, feel free to drop in and ping us. We will be happy to help. Thank you.